Hey guys and welcome to my 50th video. Yes, I didn't think I'd get it down by year's end, but here it is. And we've got a really special dinosaur to review for you today. It's a Stegosaurus. And this is it. Uh, hmm. Well, maybe, well, Stegosaurus is a very, very special dinosaur and this is a really nice wild safari model. But for the 50th video, I think we'll go with something a little bit different. So this is what we'll be reviewing for real. This is a sideshow Stegosaurus. Now Stegosaurus means roof lizard and it lived during the late Jurassic period about 150 million years ago. It was about 8 or 9 meters and weighed around 5,500 pounds. Now, this was a massive animal and fittingly so is this polystone statue. Now this is an incredible piece as you can see and it's big. The plates alone are 4 inches about 4 inches and the animal from feet up to the back is about 10 inches. Hey, you know what? Uh, it's always great to have something that, to say that you own something that's 10 inches, yeah? Um, and then the base adds another 3 inches. So the whole thing from top to bottom is 17 inches. So make sure that you've got the height clearance for wherever you plan to uh, display this guy. Now at 24 inches long for a 9 meter animal, that makes this about 115 scale, which is very close to the Sideshow Triceratops should you want to display them together. And just to give you an idea, I wanted to compare the size of just one plate, right, just one plate, to my wild safari Stegosaurus. And here it is next to the baby. Sure doesn't look like a baby now, does it? Now, there are three things Stegosaurus is famous for. Can you guess what they are? Well, of course you have the dermal plates. You have the spike tail. And the incredibly tiny head. So let's talk about them. Now you cannot fail to notice the beautiful array of plates that uh, are the defining feature of Stegosaurus. Now obviously, there was a potential risk with these relatively thin plates breaking, so to obviate that disaster, four plates are separate pieces. Now counting from the back, these are plates 5, 6, 7 and 8. Uh, they're easily removable and they're clearly labeled and numbered here and then dropped into place by gravity. Now the joint isn't too obvious and it's quite seamless uh, compared to the fixed plates. You don't want to put this in a non-child free or non-pet free environment unless you want to be a grown man or woman crying. Now, removable means easier to remove and review, so let's have a look. Now, given the high level of detail you expect from Sideshow collectibles, it's no wonder that this key feature is nothing short of stunning. Now, most stegos, like my wild safari here, uh, have these vertical lines on the plates, and they look okay. But here, the vertical lines have a really organic look, almost like actual cracks to the keratin. My favourite feature are these growth lines, here. Now the detail is spectacular, you just need to look at it. Not only is there plenty of texture, uh, it's not just a flat piece with inscribed lines. There's texture and relief separating each growth stage. You know, there's generally a very wetted, lived-in appearance too, making them look like real bone and keratin. And together with the way it's coloured, with fades of uh, brown, orange and darker brown demarcating the growth lines, this stands tall as one of the more beautifully painted Sideshow collectible dinosaurs. This is a really very nice variation to the traditional red or orange you've seen in hundreds of restorations. So what were these plates used for? Well, no one really knows. The original romantic notion 
of defensive armor was quickly demolished when one considers the relatively fragile nature of these plates. Uh, it may have served to enlarge the apparent size as a deterrent to predators, um, courtship display, threat intimidation. You know, the surfaces though were quite extensively vascularized, supporting a thermoregulatory function. Now, another mystery. How were these plates arranged? No one knows for sure. Uh, since they didn't articulate with the backbone, uh, this piece shows a possibility of how all 17 could have been arranged. Uh, a single row here on the tail of about four plates and then alternating double rows up the back and down to the neck. Next, we'll look at the business end of the animal, that famous stegomizer. Now, really, if you look at any kid's drawing of a stegosaurus, those four spikes have to be there. Now, unlike the plates, the function of these are less debatable. Now, traumatic damage to those tail spikes in about 10% mm, of stegosaurus fossils, uh, according to Matt Winnie et al., gives credence to its use as a weapon. So here you see the spikes, and man, I'm just delighted. You know, this tail looks impressive and dangerous enough, but if you look at areas of prior damage, where um, the bone has healed over, you see a real living animal encapsulated in polystone. You don't get picture-perfect animals in Asia, and these creatures surviving to adulthood You've got to believe they've been through accidents, battles, and arguments with each other. You know, just look at that detail and realism. It's freaking awesome.